I had been meaning to shoot this video for some time because I, I get this question all the time. You know, how do you determine what features you're gonna you're gonna provide? What solution you're gonna do? Like, how do you decide whether I'm gonna provide this capability, this information, and not this capability, and not this information? And the reality is, is this is where the experience, you know, having an experienced architect who has a track record of building these solutions is so important. All right, so earlier I, I had a conversation with uh, one of the engineers, one of our engineers at Intellic, uh, one of the actually architects, lead engineer. And it got me thinking about us, a subject I hadn't, I had been meaning to shoot a video on and hadn't. And it, here's a really common question that we get. And that is, or I get this question all the time. How do you know which use cases to pick um, for your proof, your first proof of concept um, when initially starting out on a digital transformation journey, either for your customer or for your employer, like where you work, or if you're a consultant, for, um, um, providing solutions for uh, an end user so the actually the answer to that is is twofold right there there are two there's two types of value you want to provide during the proof of concept number one you want to solve a problem the customer is aware of okay um, or a series of problems that they're aware of and this is part of the reason that we do the digital transformation maturity assessment is we want to assess which business problems are they already aware of, okay? And the, the way we do that is, um, I, I'm reminded of this, um, maybe six, seven years ago, I was doing a DTMA for an oil and gas customer. And um, at the beginning of the presentation, one of the initial presentations, um, I used to always say, I want everyone in the room to be thinking about a problem that they've been trying to solve for a, a day, a month, a week, a year, 10 years. Um, and it doesn't have anything doesn't have to have anything to do with technology. Just a problem you have in your job function that you've been trying to solve. And then what I would do is I'd go through my presentation, and then at the end of the presentation, I'd go back around the room and I would ask everyone to explain, you know, what give me in their example of their problem. And what I was looking for was a problem I could solve right then in ten or fifteen minutes. Okay, and with this oil and gas customer that we did this project with, there was a lease operator in the room um, in this one presentation. A lease operator, for those of you that don't do oil and gas, a lease operator is an operations person who is responsible for the leases of an oil producer. They'll be responsible for, say, like 40 locations, well pads, well sites, you know, production wells, uh, tank batteries where they store the raw oil, um, saltwater disposals where they put the salt water to, to inject back into the ground and they're all and they're all over West Texas and South Texas like middle of nowhere right and what he was saying this lease operator said you know he goes you know, we use this tool called win 911 which basically sends me a text message when uh, any of our process alarms go off out at one of these locations over you know so basically uh, like a high level switch will, will go high um, and, uh, you know, a text message, uh, a message, a signal will be sent over a cellular connection and a text message will go out to this operator. And he'll, he goes, you know, I'll get these notifications at two o'clock in the morning that I've got a high tank level out at some location that's an hour and a half from where, you know, where I'm, where I'm at. And so I'll call a pumper and that pumper has got to go out there on overtime and, you know, we'll pay a premium to go pump that tank down so that we don't have um, an environmental event and you know invariably I'll get you know the pumper will go out there and say oh man the fluid was just trickling in that tank we had plenty of time like we could have gone and done that in the middle of the day I didn't have to go out there at two o'clock in the morning and so what he what the lease operator said was he goes the problem I have is that I need to know that I have a high tank level but I also need to know really what I need to know is how much time do I have left in that tank I don't need to know if I have a high tank level. I need to know how much time I have left. And so what I did was in that presentation, I just quickly went through, looked at all the variables. Okay, I've got the volume of the tank. 
I know the height at which the high level stick is so I can calculate the volume remaining in the tank. I've got the inflow reading so I know how much fluid is flowing into the tank. I know the rate of flow out of the tank and then I know volume left so I can calculate quickly. I could just write a little script that'll calculate how much time is left in that tank in hours and minutes. And so I just did that like in 10 minutes and solved the problem. So in your proof of concept, you're looking for those types of things during the DTMA. You're asking those questions. You're trying to assess known problems. You know, those are easy to solve if you're, you know, if you're a good engineer, a decent engineer is going to be able to solve the problem the customer knows about, right? The, but there's a second piece, and this is what I was talking to our engineer about today, and he was talking about a, a client that he's working with right now. We're doing an MES solution, so we're going to do OEE, you know, downtime, all the standard MES capabilities, which you see in the first proof of concept initially. But what I was talking to him about was, what is the value, what is the value we can provide for the client, a problem that we can solve that they're not aware of, okay? And so that's... That's a more complex question to answer. And oftentimes, it is, it is one of the reasons that a, a client is hiring you to help them with their digital transformation initiative. Part of your expertise is to look at the data and information that's available across the organization and suggest um, ways of turning that data into information to help their business be more efficient. And here, here's a, the example we came up with today. So this is just an example of kind of how things go down on certain days. So he, he called me into his office. We took a look at the project. I said, ah, everything looks good here. I like that. I like that. You know, it's all standard um, four quadrant OEE heterogeneous, three, three heterogeneous quadrants, one homogeneous quadrant in the lower right. And then he said, but I, I'm looking for additional value I can provide in this proof of concept. And so we looked at the data. And one of the things that absolutely jumped out at me was... Basically, this process does, um, they, 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 uh, it's like a molding process. And basically, they, they do almost injection molding, but it's like a, a 40 minute to maybe an hour long cycle time. So they only produce one unit every hour. And then there's about 40 minutes to an hour worth of testing before they're going to serialize that part, okay? And one of the things that it became pretty clear that this client doesn't have any visibility into tying the, the, the serial number of that part to the process data, um, that is the temperatures and the pressures that we see in this injection molder. And so we quickly drew up, okay, here's the data that's available in the PLC. We've already got this pulled into the unified namespace. We've already organized it. It's semantically organized. It's contextualized. We can pull, we'll have the OEE number here. We have the work order number there. We've got the process data here. What we're missing is the serial number, which we'll be able to pull from the ERP system. But that serial number is going to lag the production data. So we had to design a way of capturing the process data and storing it for one hour so that when the product is finally tested and serialized, we'll be able to apply the serial number in the unified namespace and take that snapshot. And so then what the client can do is come back. They can either select the serial number of one of these um, units that they've created, or they can type the serial number in, and then we'll, they'll be able to bring up the process data related to the production of the unit at that work center, okay? That's not something the client's requesting, okay? What it is, is it is the second part of our role in this uh, digital transformation proof of concept. And that is looking at their data, analyzing what they have available, and then creating value from their data. Rather than asking them what they want in this case, what we're doing is we're, we're converting the data into information and then we'll present it to them in the proof of concept to see what they think. And that will get conversations started. And there, I had been meaning to shoot this video for some time because I, I get this question all the time, which is, you know, how do you determine what features you're going to, you're going to provide? How, what solution you're going to do? Like, how do you, how do you decide whether I'm going to provide this capability, this information, and not this capability and not this information? And, and 
the reality is, is this is where the experience, you know, having an experienced architect who has a track record of building these solutions is so important. Okay. And, you know, it was a great conversation that I had with them. You know, we whiteboard the whole, the whole solution in 15 minutes, looked at the data that he was already, that he already had pulled into the unified namespace. It was going to be a quick, you know, low level of effort, high value, short time to value. So remember when you are, when you're an architect or you're an engineer working on these solutions, especially in the POC phase, you're doing, you're really focused on two things. Number one, solving problems your client is aware of and, and just as important, identifying problems they are not aware of and, and providing value by solving those problems. All right. Um, thanks for watching, you know, like subscribe, yada, yada, yada. And we'll see you in the next one.